Okay, the other part that we want to discuss is the humanity of Christ. And this is particularly um, noteworthy, um, for one, because the Bible says that every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And so, uh, one of the things you'll notice, though, that the, um, all the, the, the opponents of the deity of Christ, the, the, the uh, fullness of the Godhead bodily, that in Christ uh, was, that pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell, like God um, fully reveals himself, fully manifests himself in the humanity, in the man, Jesus Christ. And so Jesus became a man. So as a man, he prayed. As a man, he slept. As a man, he um, learned. You know, he, 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 uh, when he humbled himself and he did not um, part, partake in the, in the uh, um, divine nature that he had with the full divine nature that he that he had um, he didn't he didn't he lived as a man he didn't live, live as an omniscient omnipresent um, you know being he lived as a limited temporal being and this is the mystery of the incarnation that that he became flesh um, but that he that the divinity the the fullness of the Godhead was communicated to uh, and manifested in the person of Jesus Christ in the flesh and this is important because when Christ died on the cross which is the whole point he came is to taste death for every man when he died on the cross he died as God in the flesh and so the the reconciliation that had to be made uh, between sinners and God was an infinite uh, um, an infinite separation, a gap, you know, that, that God is eternal, that he doesn't change, and his justice is immutable, and so therefore, hell is forever because God is forever and he doesn't change. So Jesus Christ, the only, the only way God can be satisfied, the only way his eternal justice can be satisfied is by the propitiation of an eternal person. So the eternity of, of Christ had to make propitiation and reconcile the eternal nature of God. So Christ became uh, a man to mediate between us and God. And so there's there's no way a creature um, could satisfy the justice of God. You know, if, if a creature died for uh, for us, then we were we, we couldn't be reconciled because that would be perpetuating an injustice. Because God is not going to cause a third party to suffer for someone else's sins. The soul that sins, it shall die. And so in order for God to make propitiation, he had to, uh, it wasn't arbitrary. It wasn't God just decided that he had to do this. It, it had to be done because the nature of God had to be satisfied. His justice had to be satisfied because he cannot change. He cannot be. Sorry, guys. Technical issues still. Um, so God had to make propitiation <clears throat> through Jesus Christ alone because of the the eternal element of his person, his unchanging nature. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Christ had to be eternal to satisfy the eternal nature of God. So, um, because as we said, God cannot deny himself, he cannot change, um, cannot contradict himself. And so, he, he can't arbitrarily, you know, just m invent some way to satisfy his justice. You know, it had to be death because he's life. Um, it has to be eternal because he's an eternal person. He doesn't change. And so the only, the only uh, atonement that could, could properly meet and satisfy the just nature of God is the eternal person of Christ, the infinite person of Christ being uh, manifested in the flesh to meet the eternal demands of the, the nature of God. And as we said before, the cults will um, try to to um, they'll try to deny the deity of Christ based on the humanity of Christ. This is a common uh, misunderstanding. They'll say, well, because Jesus was subject unto the Father, because the Father was greater than the Son, because the Father gave all things to the Son, um, because the Father was the head of the Son, and they'll they'll use all these uh, verses to say, therefore, he wasn't equal. You know, although we know that. Uh, you know, Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. So all the arguments that they use to deny the deity of Christ are just simply um, passages indicating his humanity, he, that he humbled himself. 
you know and and then you have the error of the uh of the modalists who try to say that that uh christ's uh, uh the two the two persons are only seen in the incarnation you know that before the incarnation there was unitarianism and uh that's easily refuted with you know john 17 5 that glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He had it with the Father before the world was. So uh, when they try to say that Jesus did not uh, pre-exist his incarnation as a person, you have to deny the scriptures. He came down from above. He's the Lord from heaven. He came down uh, from the Father and was returning to the Father. But um, he said, glorify me with your own self, you know, with the glory I had with you. And they try to interpret that to mean glorify me with yourself. Um, with the glory that you promised me before the world began you know not that he was with the father but that the promise of the glory was with the father but that would be nonsense because the the promise the glory of the father was the father himself the glory uh, glorify me with your own self so they read it to say glorify me with your own self which was with you which is nonsense so um he was uh, uh he pre-existed his incarnation he's an eternal person and uh, he became a man and so it needs to be understood the incarnation of Christ um, once you, if you mess with the uh, incarnation of Christ um, you mess with the, the nature of God you mess with uh, the character of God and so you can't mess with the deity of Christ and you can't mess with his incarnation or you mess with the atonement and thereby um, you you have God as denying himself so not something to be messed around with. So study those verses diligently and trust the Lord to guide you in the truth.